Welcome back to Two Minute Tuesday. We've taken a short break to organize some exciting projects, but we're back with a topic that's in high demand, pressurization systems. Firstly, why is everyone talking about pressurization? It's because the draft BS991 is proposing to mandate pressurization systems in single stair buildings over 18 meters. Hence, a lot of people are suddenly very interested in these systems and how they work. So what is one? A pressurization system is a type of smoke ventilation system that protects areas by increasing the air pressure in the protected zone relative to the fire zone. There are three main areas of a building which you might protect using a pressurization system. The first is the staircase, which is why these systems are often referred to as stair pressurization systems. The next area is a firefighting lift, and the third area is a firefighting lobby. The areas you pressurize in the performance of the system is based on classes which range from A through to F, these classes are selected by considering the use of the building, the evacuation policy, the firefighting policy, to choose the most appropriate system. There are two core objectives with the pressurization system. In a scenario where the door to the fire floor is closed, we are trying to maintain a pressure differential between the protected zone and the fire zone to prevent products of combustion leaking into the protected zones. In a scenario where the door to the fire floor is open, we're trying to maintain airflow at a certain velocity through the open door to prevent products of combustion flowing into the protected zone. Without oversimplifying what is a complex topic, the three main components of a pressurization system are supply air, overpressure relief, and air release. Supply air is the air that's pumped into the pressurized zones. This is ideally supplied from ground level, but can also be supplied at the roof level, subject to inlet locations. If pressures are too high in the pressurized zones, it can force doors shut and occupants could struggle to evacuate the building. This is why we need overpressure relief, which will prevent the pressure from reaching unsafe levels. There are various methods of achieving this, which we'll cover in a separate video. Air release is needed to make sure we have an airflow away from the protected zones. This is for two reasons. Firstly, is to make sure we keep the fire zone as close to atmospheric pressure as possible, so we maintain our pressure differential. The second reason is to make sure we have a strong airflow through any open doors, which would be difficult to achieve without sufficient air release. Air release can come in the form of facade AOVs, natural smoke shafts, or a small amount of mechanical extract. The primary document for the design and specification of pressurization systems is BSEN 12101 part six. Currently, this contains both the specifications of the system components and guidance on how to design a system. However, in January, the European Committee for Standardization, CEN, voted to approve BSEN 12101 part 13, which will replace the design element of BSEN 12101 part six. The document was then released in April and declaration of performance requirements will be enforced from the 31st of October, 2022. Part six will still be used for kit and component specification. We will cover part 13 in more detail in a separate video. However, it brings major simplifications to the way pressurization systems are designed. I hope this quick overview of pressurization systems has been helpful. You can expect much more content on this topic over the following weeks and months. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you like more content like this, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, and I'll look forward to seeing you on a more regular basis. Bye for now.